Let's talk about the Ch Chileans. I don't, is it Chileans or Chileans? Maybe you guys can help me out with that. Uh, but Chile, essentially, and the population in Chile taking refuge in stable coins. This is not uh, too dissimilar from the Argentinians or Argentines from Argentina uh, doing the same thing not too long ago. And it seems as if stable coins seem to be where everybody starts moving when there's economic turmoil in their country. Now, we would hope that eventually this moves into cryptocurrency in general, but for that to happen, what would have to happen? Well, you would have to have a significant devaluing of the US dollar. So what is happening right now? Blockchain technology is being utilized for countries in economic distress or people that are in countries in economic distress to basically preserve their wealth by moving into the US dollar via blockchain on stable coins because that's what stable coins are. Latin America's steadiest economy uh, in the last three decades is suffering a slump. Locals are turning to crypto for protection. Accustomed to living in the most stable economy in Latin America, residents of Chile are turning to stable coins to protect their assets from recent record inflation and the increasing devaluation of the peso. Local crypto exchanges have seen a 50% increase in stablecoin transactions in the last three months. Crypto Market, a Chile-based exchange with 200,000 users in the country, registered a 50% increase in purchases of the two most commonly used stablecoins, Tether, which is USDT, and USD coin, which is USDC. Both are based on the US dollar, which I think is important to note right now. During the second quarter of 2022, crypto market Chile country manager Eduardo Perez de Castro told Coindesk. And I think, like I said, it's really interesting that we are seeing the use of blockchain technology being utilized for its intended purposes, which is obviously hedging against inflation, right? Or And preserving your wealth. Preserving individual wealth is just not quite in the way that we would have necessarily originally thought that it would have played out. Because first of all, when you're looking at Bitcoin early on, you weren't really looking at stable coins. Stable coins are relatively new and stable coins were used as a way to power uh, decentralized exchanges so that you could have trading between the US dollar and other cryptocurrencies without having to have a centralized exchange that has, you know, essentially US dollar uh, tied into that exchange specifically. So you could get out of the centralized exchanges. But what is turned into now is a hedge against inflation utilizing stable coins for countries that are having experiencing extreme inflation and economic struggles and so on. Why is this important? Well, because the entire point of cryptocurrency was to enable this at the end of the day for people. And we're starting to see it come into fruition. Yes, it's not quite on the path that we necessarily expected it to. And by that, I mean, we would have expected people to move into Bitcoin. But in the case, right, that you see something like the US dollar, a reserve currency, start to lose its value then that's when we would see the shift from stable coins into something like Bitcoin. And I think that that is basically a possibility when we look at other competitive reserve currencies being developed by BRICS, for example, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. And I think it's very important to pay attention to how these shifts are happening and, and be aware that it does appear that blockchain technology in fact, right now, is being utilized to hedge against inflation. Stable coins are a type of cryptocurrency whose value is tied to an outside asset, such as the US dollar or gold, to stabilize the price. USDT and USDC are pegged one-to-one -to, -one to the US dollar. Quote, today stable coins represent 30% of users' total purchases and what they mostly choose to buy if it is their first time using the platform, Perez de Castro added. Buddha.com, which in 2015 was one of the first crypto exchanges to launch in Chile, has also seen increasing interest in stablecoins. Stablecoin market share on the platform rose from 11% in June up to 20% in July. USDC, which has been on the platform for less than a year, is the third most traded currency after Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
So that's also interesting too. While we are talking about a rise in the interest in stable coins, we're also talking about a rise in the interest in Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're still number one and number two on these platforms. So take that into account when we're discussing this. Quote, we see this is a huge trend and something users are taking as an opportunity to buy the US dollar easily without having to go to in a bank or exchange house. And that's where blockchain comes into play, right? The ease of use for the individual to decide on what they're going to do with their money without the interference of a third party or a government. Now, in this particular case, they are doing it through a centralized exchange, but it's still easier through a centralized exchange to get into a stable coin for most of these people than if they had to do it in a traditional manner and head to a bank, etc. This is going to ruffle feathers, though, at the end of the day. Stablecoin's increasing use is tied to Chile's faltering macroeconomic situation. In June, the country's year-to-year -year inflation rose 12.5%, the highest record in 28 years. One month later, its peso currency hit a record low of $1,045 per U.S. dollar dropping 3.7% in one day and forcing the central bank to make a $25 billion intervention in the foreign exchange market to stop a higher devaluation. Quote, the common Chilean citizen is turning to stable coins to save money and conserve value, right? End quote. What does that mean? Conserving value that is obviously hedging against their own inflation of the peso in Chile. A Whew, this is crazy. USDT became the platform's second most traded currency on Orion X during the last three months. The reasons, according to Perez de, Ca de Castro, the recent instability of the Chilean exchange rate is mainly due to political uncertainty. Citizens will vote in September on a pivotal, pivotal change of the Chilean constitution, which hasn't been modified since 1980 when dictator Augusto Pinochet was in power. The vote is tied to what Chileans call the social outburst, a series of protests that took place in October 2019 after an increase in tr public transport rates. The riots, which resulted in military violence, resulted in burned buses and several deaths, lasted until March of 2020 and led to the victory of left-wing leader Gabriel Boric over the incumbent right-wing government in the presidential election of December 2021. In context of this instability, local banks saw a 200% increase in demand. Demand for U.S. dollar bank accounts between April of 2021 and April of 2022, but obtaining a foreign currency account is not as easy and not an easy thing to do in Chile, according to Pablo Donders, a Chilean economist specializing in cryptocurrencies. To open a bank account in U.S. dollars, locals must first open a national bank account, which requires a minimum level of monthly income approximate to $507, according to official reports, or even higher. That is why many people do not have access to checking accounts, even fewer to U.S. dollar accounts, as it needs certified documentation that proves carry out a commercial activity abroad, Donders added. In 2018, when different crypto exchanges were setting up in Chile, traditional banks like Banco del Estado de Chile, uh, Bank Itau, Itau, and Scotia Bank, something like that, among others, began to close exchanges, uh, uh, bank accounts, due to the lack of regulation and uncontrollable risk of money laundering, according to some banks' legal statements at the time. Of course, they saw it coming. They saw the power of cryptocurrency being able to shift into the individual. And what did they do? They create FUD surrounding it. They tell you these are what the bad guys are using. We can't allow you to do that because there are bad guys doing it. This is everywhere within crypto right now. The decision placed cryptocurrency platforms in danger of insolvency and hampered their operations in the country. Crypto exchanges Buddha, Crypto MKT, and Orion X took the case immediately to the nation's competition court, suing 10 of the biggest financial institutions in the country for abuse of dominant position. One month later, banks were ordered by the competition court to reestablish the exchange's bank accounts. 
The issue, however, is far from settled. The banks appealed, and four years later, the lawsuit continues in the competition court. According to exchanges, the trial is in its final stages, and banks could be facing $76 million in penalty fees if they lose, Orion X's Van Stein told Coindesk. The trial has us constantly in tension, but at least now we have a market court decision that gives us some protection so we operate with a constant uneasy calm, said Perez de Castro. Exchanges seek regulations that will help them gain legal protections, exchange officials told Coindesk, adding that they expect in its next session, Congress will approve a fintech law that has been under debate for three years. Furthermore, Chile's government plans to develop a central bank digital currency, CBDC. Of course, what do you do? You cause FUD surrounding cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency allows the individual to control their funds and their finances. And then you create something that is similar and you put a mask on it, right? You put the cryptocurrency blockchain mask on it. And then behind the scenes, you give all the power to the federal government over your currency and you force the entire population to use it. And bing, bang, boom, you now have more power than you had before. Do not fall for it. And they gathered a team to write a white paper in the first quarter of 2022. But in May, the central bank published a report delaying any decision, saying that there is not yet enough information to make a final decision regarding issuance of a CBDC. Once again, just to clarify, <clears throat> pro-blockchain, pro-crypto, anti-CBDC. CBDCs, like I said, are just a blockchain mask over traditional fiat currencies. That's all it is. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.